Hi, my name is Morris Villaruel. I'm one of the teachers of this course. And in this module, we're going to provide you with an introduction to fish anatomy in general, as well as some details regarding the assessment of fish welfare, especially in aquaponic units. So one of the first stages in any anatomy course is to learn some basic vocabulary. This will help you to carry out your aquaponics project correctly and will probably be useful to you in life in general, especially if you want to buy and eat some quality fish. So there are four main sections to this module, external anatomy, internal anatomy, respiration physiology, and fish welfare. All of this will help you to learn more about the critical needs of fish, for example, why oxygen levels are so important, and what external signs to look for that can act as warning signals. In the first section, we'll learn some basic vocabulary and try to link anatomical features with function and physiology. Although there are quite a wide variety of fish species in general in aquaculture, most of the bony fish have common features such as a head, trunk, and tail regions. We will review some basic concepts about the eye and nose, the opercula, the skin, and a unique organ called the lateral line, and about all the different fins on the fish. Although you will probably not need to dissect your fish for your aquaponics project, it is a good idea to have some general understanding of the internal anatomy of fish, which overall is not too different from mammals, with some exceptions. Fish have brains, of course, which are actually even more plastic than our brains, maintaining the ability to make new neurons throughout life. The heart and blood circulation systems are quite simple compared to mammals, and fish also have a liver and a spleen, for example, but a unique organ called the swim bladder. The swim bladder should be filled with air at the correct time in order to avoid developmental abnormalities, such as vertebral deformations. Finally, we'll mention the kidneys, which are very important in terms of maintaining the correct osmotic balance. In section 8.3, we'll provide more details about the respiration physiology of fish, simply because this is a critical point in aquaponic systems. One of the most important ways to keep your fish alive is to make sure they get enough oxygen. The main reason for this is that oxygen levels in water are much lower than air, and fish must work a lot harder to absorb, absorb it via their gills. In the last section, section 8.4, we give a general introduction to fish welfare, including a mention of current scientific literature and its importance on an international level. It's only been recently that scientists have proven that fish can feel pain, that is, they have nociceptors and that the pain messages get to their brain. But apart from just the anatomy of pain, more attention is being paid to fish welfare since Improved welfare generally means better production and fewer health problems. We review several recent scientific publications that themselves review the state of the arts regarding fish welfare, including Conte et al., Huntingford, and Ashley. Although there is less legislation regarding fish welfare than in mammals, we also mention some key directives in the European Union. Getting to the end, in section 8.4.4, we review the HPI axis in fish, which ends up with the production of cortisol. And finally, we mention operational welfare indicators, which are becoming quite popular in aquaculture units, as well as in sea cages and even sometimes used in zoos, in aquariums and zoos. You will learn what an operational welfare indicator is, and you will have to suggest a few of your own. Here is a general scheme or outline of operational welfare indicators based on a recent publication by a Norwegian team led by Chris Noble 
in the handbook of welfare indicators for salmon. So you see on the left we have the environmental indicators, group indicators, and individual indicators, and on the right laboratory indicators. Some of these we can use during our aquaponics project. The environmental indicators include oxygen and temperature. The group indicators are usually taken from a distance. In other words, you can do it in group and you can just see it visually. And individual indicators may involve having to touch the animal and take the animal out of the water and sometimes dissection. In this module, we'll ask you to carry out several activities as we've done in previous modules. Those include some image sharing activities, a wiki on fish health, a glossary on internal anatomy, some social bookmarking on things related to fish welfare, a workshop um, on developing or suggesting your own operational welfare indicators, a discussion forum, and as in other modules, we end with a 10-question quiz. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this module.